Hi everybody, this is Denise, and welcome to Foursquare Micro Farm. I'm behind the wheel, and I'm literally behind the wheel. Uh, and I want to talk about merino. Now, I know I've said over and over and over again how much I dislike merino, and there's a couple reasons why. Uh, first of all, I think I just dislike it on principle because everybody raves about it, and I'm just like, it's not the only fiber in the world. So that's probably one of my first put offs. And then secondly, uh, I, as you know, I like to spin all my fibers. I prep almost everything raw from raw fleece. And merino fleece can be a beast to work with. First of all, normally because all of the raw fleece I've gotten as merino has been short. And when I say short, it's under three inches. And I hate working with things that's under three inches. Uh, my Angora is always more than three inches. So usually when I have Merino or short fibers like that, I'm like, I don't want to deal with that. Secondly, it tends to be a heavy grease fleece. And it's super, super crimpy and soft. So when you put short, heavy grease, super crimpy and soft together, uh, you get something that is hard to clean and just all the merino i've gotten has just been so filthy because all the oil from the sheep just attracts dirt and it seems like i got a lot of fleece that was filthy all that crimp holds in vm and then it was short and so you try to scour it and um you mess up the wool or uh, you can't get all the lanolin out. And I, I don't really like the hot scour and soak, 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 soak things over and over and over again. That's a lot for the process for me. And so normally I just, I'm like, I don't want it. And then when I got commercial merino, I found that, and you know, I feel the same way about most commercial rovings, is that they scour the life out of it. And it's because they use a chemical to break down the lanolin and the vegetable matter to VM. And so by the time I get it, I'm like, I don't want that. It feels like a Brillo pad compared to what I'm normally washing and using. And so I hate Merino. That's what I've always said. I hate Merino. I'm not very impressed with it. I don't need super soft uh, for a lot of the work that I'm doing. I like the medium wools much better and they are easier to work with in general. But I have this lovely friend from the Golden Threads and she had some Merino and... Um, Oh, I can't remember what the other one was. And I mean, I just couldn't pass it up. So I went ahead and got a sample of the raw wool. And this is what came to me in the mail. First of all, look at the staple length. Okay. That's almost five inches worth of staple length. And I was like, wow, I love this. And then look how clean that is i don't i don't remember she said these were coated or not i don't think they were but that this is it raw out the bag and it's not filthy dirty it's not a ton of vm and i was just so impressed with it that crimp and it's not the, the lanolin is not heavy overpowered it's just it's not and so i was like wow this is gonna be fun. So I do what I always do with everything. I flick cord it. This is my new thing. I used to do a lot of combing and, uh, oh, I can't remember what it was. There was something, I think it was the Jacob from last time. I actually used the hackle and combed, but this one I flick cord it and this is how it turned out. Oh, I forgot to say that uh, this was hot soaked. I didn't really scour it, it was hot soaked. Okay, several times and wrenched and just look at that. That was so nice. So, and then there was a bag of it that after I hot soaked it and washed it, I dyed it blue. And I have some of this uh, in my shop that's been flicked and soaked, washed. And it's a bag that's um, an ounce of Merino, an ounce of Angora, English Angora, I think. It might be 
might be French Angora, and an ounce of soft silk for blending. I have it in my store. And this was just incredible. Totally changed my mind. So I'm looking forward to spinning this. And I'm, I'm betting I'm gonna enjoy this. So, I mean, if I'm gonna get Merino from her, this would definitely be a game changer uh, as far as how I feel about Merino and uh, working with raw Merino fleece. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this up. And I'm expecting this to turn into a pair of uh, muffetees. And I'll talk about the muffetees in a different video. See you at the wheel. So hoping that's a good enough shot and uh, hopefully no dog gets in the middle of the video. Okay, so here I am with the Merino and I just like to flick the ends. Okay, basically just literally flicking the ends. I flick them so far down on one side and then I flick them so far down on the other side. And all it does is just, just just opening them up to make it easier to spin. I do very little to them and maybe flick out some VM if there's any in there. And I have both the blue and the natural. And I'm just actually going to just spin them all together because when I apply this, I'm going to over dye the finished product. So I think I'm going to over dye this blue with some periwinkle and it's going to turn out really cool. So I'm not going to worry about that. Get my wheel started. And of course I'm spinning worsted. The short backwards draw. And this, this Merino is really nice. It's got a really nice smooth spin to it. Really springy. So I'm putting some twist, good deal of twist into it. It, depending on the fiber, when I'm doing the short backwards draw, sometimes the draw is not quite so short. This is four inches. I've had Angora that's longer. I do long wools. So sometimes the, the draw backwards is so smooth, it's, it's almost like a long draw, except that um, I pinch, I'm pinching the fiber so that the twist doesn't enter the drafting zone. And that's basically what makes this worsted as opposed to woolen. And as you can see, even though I use a quarter to flick, my ends are still lined up perfectly and I'm feeding it into the orifice uh, tip to tip. So they're still, fibers are still lined up perfectly. So this is essentially still a worsted spin. And as usual, I mean, I'm still pedaling like uh, I'm in a Tour de France. <laughs> even though I don't really have to uh, treadle that fast with the ladybug, like I do the louette. And, I, and two, I mean, I can always hold the fiber longer, which is what I would do on the spindle. Just hold it longer to allow more twist to travel up. But I just like pretty much zoom in like that. And so I um, feed it into the orifice. I draft fast enough, just like I would. Uh, Keep it moving. Sometimes it's hard to talk and spin at the same time because it's such a relaxing um, activity. I just like to keep it going. And then I remember, ooh, gee, I guess I am on the camera. I probably should say something to tell you what I'm doing. Okay. The dogs are starting to get up and move around. So after this, of course, I, I love the ply from center pull ball, and this is no exception. So after the yarn is plied and I go to dye it, I'll come back with the next segment so you can see what it looks like. Okay, 
Okay, so uh, the skein of merino is complete. And I dyed it in a jar and I left it twisted when I dyed. So after I unwrap it, this is pretty much what it looks like. I wish the camera could get better colors because you just really don't quite get the subtlety of this. This is not white right here. This is actually kind of like a light lavender purple. And then the blue, and what's interesting is um, for what was blue before when I spun it, you'll see this blue right here. But what was white dyed a li very light, well, oh, that's much better now, dyed a very light lavender. So it's kind of a barber pole right here. And there's a, let me see, a couple other places where you'll see the, the blue. The blue did not really pick up the periwinkle. Uh, and the blue state blue and the white where barber pole turned into a, uh, a periwinkle, which I think is really, really neat. And so uh, being a process video, I, I kind of would like to take this all the way to the end of the process with the merino, but um, in the middle of more than one project, I, I started the weaving with hand spun. I'm gonna make the bag and I just finished that and so it might be a while before I use the merino, but let me show you what it's gonna look like. I'm doing video tutorials for a young lady and one of them was to make the muffa tea. And when I made the muffa tea this time, I put the feather and fan at the top of the muffa tea. And so I've, I've done it a couple different times and I'm working on perfecting that well, for the first fingerless mitt uh, I did for the muffety, didn't have anything on it, and it was just nice and plain. I like that one. That's the one with the muffety video. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to pick up stitches across the top of the muffety because they're all going um, vertical and I'm knitting up. And so I was like, I could pick up stitches across the top, which would be fine. Uh, and then the other one would be to, as I'm going up in the other direction, fold that over. So I had to decide how many stitches to cast on for that. And then I'd have live stitches at the top. And then I could add the feather and fan there. And I don't really quite get the ruffle effect I was looking for. Because I really didn't pick up that many stitches. I mean, I cast on 26 for this one. Or no, 28. And so I picked up, you know few more stitches to make the 36 and the other one I actually cast on 36 but it's a different fiber so that kind of turns out differently so I'm not it's not a big ruffle up here I think I may have wanted more ruffle so I have to you know pick up more stitches we'll see how that goes so I haven't really decided yet so right now I did the live and they're okay they're all going horizontal but I kind of think I like the vertical look so I think when I do the merino I'm going to knit the muffety as said, and then I'm going to pick up the stitches along the the uh, along the edge. Pick up some stitches along the edge. But when I decide that, then I'll go ahead and finish the merino and show pictures of that. I don't know if I'm going to do a second video or whatever it is I'm going to do. But this is how it turned out. I really enjoyed this. This was nice and springy. I like the way it took up dye, and it, it just definitely has changed my opinion about uh, merino. Ooh, I wish I could remember how many yards I got. I think it was like 140, maybe 100 and something odd yards. And I'm gonna dust off my first scale. Poor thing is so dusty. That's the one thing about spinning a lot of raw fiber and processing it raw fiber in this room is the dust is unbelievable okay so let's see this was 2.2 ounces and maybe i got 150 yards my last uh the rumble lace spin i got 166 yards out of one ounce and that was fingering weight so this is probably a um DK sport weight, no, not a sport weight, um, a light worsted weight, DK something. But I, I don't know, I haven't really done the wraps per inch for it. But pretty much, okay, this is how it turned out. 
And I got it from Ollie at the Golden Threads. You can find her on Instagram or Facebook. See if she's got any more of this lovely merino. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, or you want me to uh, do some other process videos or finish things out, just leave something in the comments. And as I'm learning to make videos, I'll make more and make what you'd like to see. Thanks a lot.